Its goal was to create a clone of Big Boss, the ultimate soldier. The project was led by Dr. Clark, known at the time as Paramedic. After dozens of failures, they finally, miraculously, succeeded in producing a fertilized egg. The egg used in the successful in vitro fertilization came from Dr. Clark's assistant, a healthy Japanese woman. Blood from the east flows within your veins. Give birth to Big Boss. To realize this, I asked to serve as the surrogate mother and was more than happy to carry you in my womb. I loved him. Nine months later, I gave birth to two Big Bosses. You and Liquid. It didn't matter that you were clones or that they had manipulated your DNA. You were born the same way as any other normal child, from your mother's womb. But Les Enfants Terribles proved to be the final straw for Zero and Big Boss. Determined to oppose Zero and his plans, Big Boss broke away from the Patriots. He left the States, created his own mercenary company, and drifted around the world. I'm sorry. Your father never wanted you. Human life isn't meant to be manipulated like that. I knew that, but I wanted you. After Big Boss left, Zero really lost control. What Zero wanted was an orderly world, one governed by rules. His fortune grew through countless wars, and his words influenced decision-making all the way up to the Oval Office. As the world saw the rise of digital technology, IT, the Internet, and genetics, the Patriots' power grew immense. Their roots spread and took hold throughout the globe. In time, they began to dictate the fate of entire nations from the shadows. And before we knew it, the Patriots, the proud police of the world, started bringing an entire planet under their control. Their intentions were fair, but their execution was flawed. Zero developed weapons, amassed armies, used information for extortion, all in order to gain more wealth. He was obsessed with controlling awareness on the inside from the outside. But I cannot imagine that's what the boss would have wanted. They both misinterpreted her will. And their absolute reverence for her drove them apart. So began the war between Zero and Big Boss. Opposing interpretations, each striving to realize the boss's will. Everything you see today stems from their Cold War. <laughs> Differences in race, in religion, in ideology. This war they've caused is no different from any other human error in history. It all started with a tiny fork in the path. And grew into a great rift. There was nothing left of the boss's noble will in their struggle. All that remained was hatred, a passion to destroy one another. Big Boss returned to the U.S. with a plan in mind and once again assumed command of Foxhound. In Outer Heaven, and then Zanzibar Land, Big Boss plotted coup d'etat against Zero. But you, Solid Snake, his own clone, foiled his efforts both times. 
Big Boss and Gray Fox, Frank Yeager, were left near death. Zero recovered their bodies. Frank Yeager's entire body was reconstructed through surgery, and he was reborn as the cyborg ninja. Big Boss, now a vegetable, became a prisoner of Zero even in death. For Zero, more than anyone else, your father was an irreplaceable icon. No, the truth is, for Zero, he was an irreplaceable friend. After Big Boss's betrayal, Zero could no longer believe in something so uncertain as life. He lost his belief in everything. Nations, organizations, individuals. Zero was no longer willing to place his organization in the hands of the next generation. Instead, he set up a network of AIs, a decision-making system formed from all the information he had accumulated. He built four AIs, GW, TJ, AL, and TR, as sort of a digital Mount Rushmore, and one core artificial intelligence to unite them, John Doe. GW? The same GW we destroyed five years ago? The same. Ever since GW was cut off, JD and the other three AIs have controlled all information on every aspect of global society. Economics, politics, law, morals, and culture. The war economy is no exception. In the shadow of the system and its complete control over the world, Big Boss isn't allowed to live or die. He's trapped for eternity in a brain-dead prison. To bind himself to his friend, to ensure his rule over the world, Zero transformed Big Boss into an icon, neither living nor dead. Sounds almost like a religion. Naturally, Ocelot and I planned to free him from Zero's prison. We enlisted Naomi Hunter, an authority in the field of nanomachine research, into our organization. And we used Frank Yeager to kill Dr. Clark. Ocelot tortured the DARPA chief, Donald Anderson, also known as Sigmund, to death and made it look like an accident. The Shadow Moses incident. With Paramedic and Sigint dead, Zero was the only one left. But we too paid a price. I lost Ocelot. Ocelot wasn't fighting for the Pentagon or the Russians, and certainly not for Zero. He was fighting for Big Boss. He idolized him. When Ocelot grafted Liquid's right arm to his own, his body was taken over by Liquid's thoughts and spirit. He may be Ocelot in physical form, but his mind is Liquid's. I was the last one. And then someone appeared to help me. Raiden. It was when I met him that I finally discovered the location of Big Boss. It was in the data he obtained from GW. Together, he and I retrieved Big Boss. But Big Boss was still asleep, as Zero had left him. Why did Zero keep him alive? People need heroes. Zero wanted to create a messiah. A legend. That would never die. Liquid is after Big Boss's body. Is it here? I'll take you to meet him. <laughs> 